Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us David Wang, Head of Product at Tetrate. David, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, it's great. Great to be here. Nice to meet you. Today, we are primarily going to talk about the general availability of Tetrate Service Express or TSC. Uh, but before we get into the details of this uh, announcement, um, it's a very good idea to just remind our viewers to just uh, build a baseline. What is Tetrate all about? Tetrate was uh, here to basically bring uh, availability and network security to workloads uh, of enterprises. And we're starting uh, with Service Mesh, uh, bringing it to the enterprise. Uh, we're created by people who built this for in production for many of the largest internet companies we know. And we're basically taking that knowledge, skill set, experience, and putting our product um, to help our customers achieve their security and availability goals. Can you also talk about the role that Tetrade is playing in this whole very complicated cloud-native, cloud-centric, Kubernetes-native world? Firstly, for many people who are trying to get into this, they're interested in the open source project Istio. So we are experts in Istio. We offer support to help people get started, get going. And beyond that, we also bring together the best of open source as well as proprietary, proprietary product around our knowledge and expertise to bring a platform around Istio and an Envoy um, to deliver sort of like the outcomes that our customers want when it comes to security and availability. Now let's talk about uh, you know, the Tetris Service Express. Uh, what is it all about? Tetris Service Express is really a big piece of bringing the enterprise service mesh to Amazon EKS users who want to use Istio and Envoy. Um, it is really like pretty much the only gaming town in terms of Istio-based service mesh. It is as close to EKS native as possible uh, because it just pre -com comes pre-built with integrations for uh, most of the common AWS services you would have to integrate with if you want to use service mesh with Istio. So things like Route 53, AWS Load Balancer, Manage Grafana, um, AWS PCA, and also you can transact right on Amazon uh, Marketplace. So it fits comfortably in this product portfolio that I alluded to earlier about help, helping people getting started with Istio, experimenting with it, and going to scale. It basically helps EKS users go from zero to app, app deployment in just six simple steps, something that could really be done in hours. And it's really built on the same foundation of our much broader enterprise platform that's used by a lot of the trusted financial services around the world, Tetrate Service Bridge. And it's available to anybody who wants to do an eval sort of in 30 days. Tetrate Service Express is one of the three offerings we have. It fits comfortably in the portfolio. So on the one hand, we really, for people who are just starting to learn um, Istio, we have the Tetrate Istio subscription, which is enterprise support. Um, FIPS certificate um, for people who are trying to get going. Um, on the other end, we have Tetrate Service Bridge, which is really a for mature multinational enterprises who's looking to transform their infrastructure across many clouds and environments with Service Mesh. Tetrate Service Express, what we talked about, fits in the middle, which is people who's gotten some success, they're looking to scale, but they do not know, they do not see far ahead enough to commit to a transformation. And through this range of portfolio, we really aim to solve, as you started, where we started earlier, which is the whole range of needs of people getting started with cloud native. Talk a bit about uh, uh, how much adoption you're seeing of service mesh and are you see, hey, there is still a room, a lot of organizations are still, uh, they're not seeing the benefits of it, which leads to the actual question is that, first of all, adoption, and then why, what are the benefits of uh, service mesh? Yeah, so what we're seeing everywhere we see, people are experiencing pains that Service Mesh can solve. And fundamentally, that's about, uh, you know, I am running workloads, some increasingly more in Kubernetes. How do I ensure security and availability? So that's a, almost like a universal pain. Uh, many are experimenting with Service Mesh because it's a kind of like a proven paradigm conceptually. Uh, to achieve the goals they want. And specifically here, it's uh, the thing I want to bring up is zero trust principles, right? There's security in, security in abstract, but then there's achieving zero trust. That is all, that's a becoming like kind of like the norm that people want to, a, a, a common goal we want to go after. Um, so people see service mesh as like a proven paradigm to achieve zero trust principles without impeding developer productivity. So that's generally the thing we see. 
And on top of that, we are seeing that Istio and Envoy are open source projects. That's really becoming the de facto like engine behind the service mesh. So uh, when you ask me about the benefit of service mesh, it's secure, it's zero trust security and it's high availability. But in terms of why they Tetris Service Express is sort of like the place to go, is that what we're seeing is at the same time as organizations say they want these great benefits, uh, they see some of the foundational pieces that they learn as the engine to a car. They want the car, they don't, like the engine's not enough. So what they need um, from us is kind of like a management plan and management capabilities for their stakeholders, such as the application teams and the central platform teams to get the business benefit of having a service mesh. And Tetra Service Express is really the product that's around the core open source components that give these stakeholders the business benefit of having a service mesh. Let's talk about how TSE kind of makes it once again easy for organizations to consume and of course reap benefits of uh, these benefits that you talked about. A couple sort of things that we we hear, right? One is, uh, so remember what we said earlier, Tetris Express is exclusively available on AWS geared for EKS. So the first thing we see that's fairly common is just cross-region redundancy and availability. You know, AWS regions are generally pretty bulletproof, but as we all know, outages do happen um, and the cost can be very high, you know, for uh, some of our you know, customers we see can run into the millions in lost revenue, right? So what people want is to be able to automatically fail over from one region to the other. And Tetra Service Express offers that because we have native integrations with Route 53, make this transparent automa automatic failover easy. The second piece is um, a lot of the platform teams want to be able to set up guardrails to deliver on zero trust principles that as an organization they've committed to um, without impeding developer productivity. So zero trust principle would be something like the NIST standards that are just published, uh, SP 800-207A, it basically says you should assume that attacker is ready in your perimeter. You need continuous verification of identity. So Tetra Service Express allows the organizations to set up, run, and maintain policies that does continuous checks, does it by default, and provide audits to prove that it's being done properly if need be. It natively integrates with the AWS private CA, so to help you to manage this identity. So that's the second dimension where um, Tetris Service Express helps with EKS users. The third and the major one, the last one I would say is that it's just about extending AWS native tools to help developers increase their velocity. So the thing here is that whenever you have um, development teams trying to work with these advanced cloud native infrastructure, a lot of the tools kind of become roadblocks because it's hard to learn. Um, Tetris Service Express gives the ability for a center of excellence like or a platform team to set the guardrails by defining policies, defining how uh, canary releases should work and how it should integrate with the development tool chain, put that in motion so that develop, so adopting new tools like service mesh or Kubernetes or new release processes is transparent to the development team. And here, uh, the, an example I would cite is we integrate with Amazon managed Grafana and other observability tools so that, you know, the developers can just continue to use the tools that they're accustomed to and see what's going on with their deployments um, transparently without really changing how they work. So those are the three things that we usually, we usually see. And you folks have had a kind of tech preview uh, for a while now. Can you talk about what kind of feedback you received and uh, how it impacted the final release? We've had a lot of interest uh, broadly. And I think the one aspect that new piece of information we got since going to tech preview is how many people actually have already started with evaluation of open source Istio. So there's, uh, we see a lot of folks get started with initial evaluation with Istio. Many of them actually started with Tetra Istio distro because it comes with um, EKS almost like as an add-on. And the feedback we're getting from them is that they see the potential, but they reach kind of like a scaling limit as they try to go cross over one cluster or different regions. And we see this a lot in, in sort of organizations that want to operate nationally with some redundancy and scale. Um, and uh, they really come to us to, to, to look for this in-between solution that comes after having learned and evaluated Istio in purely open source. And when they're ready to go truly big, like 
multi-cloud or transformation. They want this little adoption step to scale out the experiment they've had that's successful. And knowing that helped us to really shape the roadmap of, of Tetris Service, Service Express because we see solving these sort of like early day one and day two problems as the primary pain point. Um, and that has a huge impact on sort of like what we're putting in the GA, um, basically the getting started experience. Um, and we, we can't wait for people to sort of like try it out and let us know what they think. Can you also talk about, of course, I would not ask you to name any names if you don't want to, but some of the use cases of TSC on EKS. There's a lot around financial, like um, I would say almost like regional financial institutions and banks. Uh, we are in active deal cycles with them, so I don't really want to disclose names, but um, the problem they're solving is a bit what I alluded to earlier, which is that they have a single cluster, single region service mesh running, and they're in, encountering problem scaling. And having seen potential for region outages and being able to do the mental math of the cost in lost revenue, they want to create redundancy, but it's just too big a leap. So they want to get Tetris Service Express to help them make that transition from scaling out from one region to multiple region. That's one common case. And another one that's much more straightforward is, again, a bit of a financial services or even like we're talking to some government um, entities, uh, any security conscious organization is they want an easy and fast, the easy button for turning on MTLS or encryption between services by default. And they've tried it various ways, but um, anything that involves asking the application team to put it in the application is not going to work. It's too slow. So having a service mesh that helps them deliver that in a turnkey fashion is supremely important. So that's another common use case. And they want to do it again in EKS across multiple regions. Um, somewhat achievable, like we see people with our Istio sort of Tetra Istio offering doing that on their own successfully, much harder across regions. And that's why for many organizations, when they get to that point, they think of something like Tetris Service Express. David, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, uh, talk about this announcement and also share your insights about, of course, EKS and how you folks are helping customers there. Thanks for all those insights, and I'd love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you very much.